All right. The fatties are at it again. The fat fluencers, that's the new word I'm using for them, are organizing. They're on the stampede. They're, the new mission of the fat positivity movement is to change the ways in which they fly. So this um, fat fluencer named, what's her name? Jaylen is going viral right now and making headlines for her proposition of how airlines should handle flying while fat. Let's see what she has to say. Have you heard stories of plus size travelers being ridiculed, humiliated, or even removed from flights because of their size? It's a common fear among the plus size community and it's absolutely unacceptable. Join my petition calling on the FAA to require all airlines to have a written official customer of size policy for plus size travelers. This policy will provide accessible additional seats, clear communication, reimbursement, accommodations, and employee training. As my petition states, all plus size passengers should be provided with an additional seat or two or three depending on their size and need during a flight for comfort. Under this policy, airlines should also offer a straightforward refund process for those who are buying additional seats independently. Under this policy, employees must be trained to handle sensitive situations and provide appropriate customer service. Sign this petition to demand that airlines take concrete steps towards making air travel more inclusive and accommodating for all passengers. Let's ensure that everybody can fly comfortable without fear of discrimination. Sign my petition now, link in bio. So this is the first video. And the second video is of her walking down the aisle on an airplane to give an example of what she's talking about, how airplanes are fat phobic. Let's watch that. The caption says, honestly, it's discrimination that they can't build wider aisles in airplanes in 2023. And for the audio listeners, she's moving throughout the plane and, you know, having a really hard time like squeezing in the aisle because she's very very large like huge like her hips are giving continent she has continental hips <laughs> all right you get the point she can't move through the plane so a few things i'm totally okay with policies stating that you know customer service should be maybe like not so like just making sure they're not disrespectful to fat people because no one deserves to be disrespected in public. Like we're all adults here. Like everyone puts on, you know, one leg of their pants at a time, right? Like I'm like all of you guys too. It's like, I, you know, tuck my balls inside my body and put my Crocs on like every other person watching this video. I'm not okay today. Anyways, in all seriousness, um, the idea that you should get three seats for free or, you know, get three seats for the cost of one simply because of your life choices is nuts. And I think it's a sad state of the world where this woman really thought to pull out the camera, have herself recorded walking down an aisle that she cannot actually move through and somehow turn that into a petition or any type of argument that that's about the world needing to change rather than her needing to change, right? First of all, this is not exactly a demographic that corporations need to necessarily pander to, at least in the travel industry, because the unfortunate reality is like, a lot of y'all aren't even gonna be around for much longer anyways. This is something that kills people. Being this morbidly obese kills people. And I think to be a fat fluencer is, just as negative as being someone like a Eugenia Cooney, right? Who is intentionally, some people have this argument that Eugenia Cooney, who by the way, is the very, very anorexic YouTuber. And people say, well, maybe she's not directly promoting her lifestyle. You, you absolutely are. If you're not actively saying that you're unhealthy for the weight you are, then that's wrong. So I just, it's just like this entitlement. And, and first of all, we have such a lack of real problems in this country. For all the problems we do have, this kind of thing makes me feel like we really don't have that many problems, right? Because <laughs> it's just like the fact that she's here taking up this mantle and filming herself, just very being so serious. And, and this is really her fight, right? This is really like, I'm fighting to get free seats for fat people. It's like, I promise you everything will be better if you just lost weight. And I hate that 
people's instinct is not to just say that, right? It is so harmful to just say that. Like I look at someone, I look at her in this video and I see someone who's very much struggling and I feel terrible about that because when I even go here, it's like right now I'm like probably five to seven pounds heavier than I want to be. And that's because I've been in a deep depression for like a month and a half. I've been in a very dark place and it's hard when you are in a dark place to take care of yourself. And so that's how I know that a lot of these people that end up this morbidly obese, they are so deep in the hole. And the only way for them to cope with that is to treat it as if they're some marginalized group because of it. And it's like, baby girl, you're not marginalized. You're busting out of the margins. You shouldn't be like... I do agree that they should be able to buy multiple seats because I think there's some airlines that don't even allow you to buy multiple seats for one person. You probably should be able to buy like two seats because ain't nobody trying to sit next to you. And that's just being real. Like I've sat next to obese people and it is absolutely a hellish experience. And if there's two obese people on either side of you, you straight up don't have a seat despite you paying for it. So it's very unfair to everyone else on the plane. You know, people need to, this mentality of like my problems are actually, is actually the world's fault is really, really a deep rooted toxic element of society today. It is no one else's problem that you've eaten yourself to this state and don't say it's your thyroid. Don't say it's, I get that there are external factors, you know, I have no idea what's gone on in your life, Jalen, to end up eating yourself to this, to this weight. And Whatever's happened to you is not fair. And I extend, I know I sound like a bitch all the time and I've sounded very bitchy in this segment and I've cracked jokes at your expense, but I really do extend a lot of human empathy to you that something clearly must have happened to eat yourself to the state. I am not being disingenuous because I know that when I lose control of my weight and my body, it's because I got some shit going on. So... I feel bad, but that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that fat people are some marginalized group that needs special rights or special or, or excess care. You, you just need to take responsibility for your life. You know, life is short. Why make it even shorter allowing yourself to be like this and trying to make it okay and trying to get the world to be okay with it? The world will never be okay with it so change yourself the world is not going to change around you all right i have lockdown nostalgia and i know i'm not alone says harriet walker <laughs> of the times baby girl that's stockholm syndrome that's not nostalgia that's stockholm syndrome that's you being emotionally and psychologically abused by your abuser aka the government I hate this. I hate, and I posted this on my Instagram story and I had a few people even that follow me that are like, well, you know, I'm not going to lie. I have some nostalgia for, for that time as well because I got so much done. Okay. If you have nostalgia for the government locking you in your home for three years, you got, you got some problems. There's the amount of psychological harm in mass that lockdowns caused for you to be nostalgic towards that. People losing their businesses, people losing their lives. Don't don't put that on anyone else, baby. That's that's you. That's you having, you know, let's not normalize lockdowns. Let's not make it seem like it might be some fun or kitschy thing to have happen again. Because it wasn't. It was, in my opinion, the largest human rights violation that I have witnessed in my lifetime. And I have spoken to people much older than me who confirm that they have never seen a larger human rights violation in their lifetime. We're in this weird period. I was talking about this with Roseanne, funnily enough. Um, we're in this weird period where people are pretending like it never happened and that it wasn't awful and there's just no discussion about like how to make sure it doesn't happen again. But I know for damn sure the way you make sure it doesn't happen again is writing these fugazi-ass articles talking about I have lockdown nostalgia keep it to yourself ain't nobody trying to hear that because a lot of people were deeply harmed by lockdowns like if, if you want to just stay at home for the rest of your life figure out a way to do that without calling for lockdowns again 
disgusting. Hey, if you guys enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel and watch the full episode, which will be somewhere on the screen.